amplifier. So why do we need power amplifier? Because in your circuit, you remember we keep doing amplification. I, I talk to the speaker, the speaker generates some millivolt or microvolt of voltage. Then I want to amplify, not speaker, the microphone, right? Uh, and then you want to uh, amplify it 10 times, 100 times. But eventually you want to go back to the real world. You want to amplify it. You need to drive a speaker. And in this process, you are trying to do the so-called power amplification. Of course, you cannot amplify the, I mean, you cannot, how to say, energy is conserved. But you can amplify the power because you supply more power to it, right? It's just like the, uh, you drive the car, the gas pedal is an amplifier. You only put very few energy to the gas pedal and then you amplify and your car can drive much faster, a lot of power, right? Now, so then we are in a different regime because when we are putting this into the real world, for example, the actuator, the motor, you draw a lot of current and the voltage is very high, it's no longer linear. So in this, but only this slide, right? Or uh, maybe later, if we talk about oscillation, uh, only this slide that we do not talk about small signal anymore. And we don't, cannot rely on linearity anymore, right? At the beginning, I emphasized a lot of time we're doing linear circuit. We linearize it, we get GM R0, then everything we can do by superposition, including when we are treating the noise. But now you cannot do that anymore. Right, so this, the regime is different. So you need to change your mentality when you are talking about this power amplification or this output stage, okay? This is the first thing. So let's try to appreci appreciate what's going on. Now, if you look, for example, I have a one watt uh, speaker. I forgot the one in the lab. Do you remember anyone who did the lab? Is it 10 watts or one watt? 10, 10 watts, right, yeah. So let's say we have one watt and then uh, its standard is eight ohm resistance. This is a very small resistor, right? So let's see what is the peak current. So the power is always equal to the peak of the voltage divided by the square root. This is the root means square, right? So we take the square and divide it by the low, right? So basically it's just saying this, of course, usually power, instantaneous power is V squared divided by R, right? Or it is your current times V, right? Or you can say it is I uh, R squared because you use the Ohm's law, V divided by I equal to R. You just keep substituting, you get the same thing. But this is the instantaneous, instantaneous power, right? But usually your signal, is a sine wave, right? You may be something like this. So at that particular time, yes, the power is the voltage squared divided by R, but what is the average power you deliver? Then it is going to the peak, right? This is the VP, right? The average is peak VP divided by square root, right? Because if you try to do an integration, you try to find out the average power, right? You need to integrate, let's say, from zero to the period divided by total period, and then I times V dt. Agree? Because I V is the instantaneous power, right? You just integrate them, and then you get the total energy and divided by the time that is the power, right? You learned that before, but this is not what I'm going to test you, but you should have you should be aware of this, right? When you go to work. The only thing I just want to say then, it turned out this is equal to the VP uh, divided by square root two square divided by RL. Okay, if you try to do the integration. So let's assume this is, yeah. I square R. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> good, good job, thank you should be I square R, right? Because V, v is I R, right? So I times V is I square R. Good, very good. Right, so you don't, you don't need to know how to derive this, but uh, you need to know the background, right? So you, when you see square root two, you see, you know, oh, it is because of that. Now, then let's try to make an, look at an example. So if the, Volt power is one volt, okay. 
And then what is the peak voltage, right? Vp divided by square root 2 square divided by 8 ohm, okay? So Vp, right, this is Vp, is going to be 2, right? And then 16, right? Uh, so it's going to be square root 16, which is equal to 4 volts, right? So it's a big voltage, right? No, no longer talking about mini ampere, I mean mini volt. And then what is the peak current? It's just equal to the peak voltage Vp, right? Divided by what? The low, the low resistor. Very good. Rl, right? So it is just four divided by eight equal to zero point five ampere. That's a lot of current because you should know that, right? For electric sh shock, if you get zero point five or one ampere, that's a big deal already, right? Of course, depends on the voltage also. So this is just to show you that uh, maybe it, it would be good to draw the scenario so you know what I'm talking about. Basically what we're saying, right? You have a signal going, going in. Right. And now this signal is with the Vp equals to 4 volt. And this is going into a speaker with 8 ohm. Resistance, very small resistance. Right, this might be your speaker, right? Something like that. This is the scenario. Okay, so what do you see? Completely different from what we saw be before. High voltage swing. So definitely you need large signal model. You cannot use linear model. You cannot say just do small signal GM or whatever. High current. So it is going to heat up your device because high voltage of high current. It has small loading, right? We, before we say that a perfect voltage loading, it is going to be uh, infinite input impedance, right? But this one has very small. So you can treat this maybe a good current uh, Loading actually try to deliver the current high power and heating right. So go beyond this. Do not just think about speaker. This this applied to the same like the, the 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 electronics in your Tesla right in all this electric car all this thing. So yeah, transmitter yeah ah uh, all all this uh, uh even RF yeah. So still good to learn something. Then when you have a large signal, what will happen? Uh, you, for example, I, I would trust to use a source follower as an example. You may get into distortion. So this is the time, this is the voltage. So I might have a sm small signal, right? Of course, my drawing is not going to be in scale, but I, it's like this. I may have an input like this. This is my V in. Now, when my signal is small, maybe you remember the source follower? You just shift down, right? This is V out, right? So this is small input. So no problem. I still get the shape of, the, of my signal. But what if I have a large signal? What does it mean? It means I have a lot of swing. Okay, then what happened? If I shift by the same amount, right, I need to be a little bit exaggerating. Then this part cannot go to negative if my circuit does not support the negative part, right? Then you will cause a distortion of the signal. Hmm? Clipping, the distortion here means uh, it's clipping in this case. So when this happened, maybe there's some problem with my 
PowerPoint. I want to, I need to escape it. Otherwise I may lose. Okay. Now, by the way, what is the problem of distortion? Just a side, uh, another no piece of knowledge. It's not that you say, I don't care about distortion, it works well for me uh, because the distortion is small. Uh, I am okay with this music, right? Uh, is that when you do a Fourier component analysis, originally this is a regular sine wave, you only have a low frequency. With this one, as you know, for a square sine wave, you actually have a lot of frequency, right? So you're going to generate a lot of high frequency components. And remember, this is a power amplification. You have a lot of energy there. So you are going to emit this high frequency component and you're going to interfere with other devices around you. And that is called EMI, right? Electromagnetic interference. And that's why all the components, right? If you look at your iPhone or desktop, they all say they, uh, they are compliant with the US EMC, electromagnetic compliance and then Europe and Japan or China. So every region have their own uh, requirement. And you need to emit less than certain power of a certain frequency. Otherwise, you cannot sell your product, right? So this is not just a matter of saying that uh, the quality is worse. My customer doesn't care. It, because you're doing power amplification, you're emitting a lot of high frequency component that you can intrude into other channel. It's okay. So that, that, that one you need to pay attention to. And that is the same for the um, power device. So although we go from silicon, uh, from silicon device, we said we can go from silicon device to silicon carbide and gallium light. Try now a day for all those uh, power converter. But one thing, uh, one advantage is not just that they have a larger band gap and less leakage. It's also because they can operate at higher frequency. When you have operate at high frequency, your inductor can be smaller because omega L gives you the inductance. For the same inductance, uh, if you can use gallium nitride or silicon carbide, you actually can go to high frequency. For example, at 10 megahertz instead of one kilohertz. Then your whole system becomes smaller. If you look at all those transformers, they have a very bulky inductor. But now with high frequency, you can go to smaller. But however, that gives another problem is this high uh, frequency, you have a lot of more EMI. And that is another problem with the ultra wideband gap. Okay, so try to link this together. Now, another thing is the power efficiency, right? When you try to deliver a certain power to your load, not all of them convert it to what you want, right? Some are just uh, becomes the heat, right? So, so the power efficiency eta is equal to power uh, delivered to the load. Right? Divided the, by the total power delivered, right? Or used. Or maybe I should say use, right? And what is the problem of this? Yeah, that is the main point. Very good. It's not about I'm stingy. It's not because I don't have energy to waste. Yeah, of course, that is a main problem. But one of the major problem is the heat. Because all those you did not deliver to the low will becomes the heat. And what should you do? You need to cool it down. How do you cool it down? A lot of water, a lot of component. And then your whole thing becomes heavier. And that is why Silicon concava and gallium nitride has better efficiency. That's why if they use in your electric car, you need less coolant. You need a small and also a smaller inductor. The whole form factor becomes smaller. And when it is smaller, your car will be more efficient and cheaper. Okay. So remember, it's the heat, not just that I'm wasting the energy. Right. Another is the power rating. You need to have the idea that we are delivered uh, signal, right, or uh, to the transistor. So there is a point that the transistor is off and you apply a very huge voltage across it. So power voltage rating means the maximum voltage, right, that will appear across a transistor. For example, you, you have uh, all this light bulb converter, 
uh, boost converter. Uh, I don't know if all have learned it. If you have learned that, or even not, you should know that it's just a switch turning on, off, on, off. And there, during a certain time, your switch, this is at the off stage, maybe. Thank you. This is at the off stage. Maybe you have 1,000 volts across it. Let's say 100 volt in this case, right? Across the source and drain. It's going to break down if you don't design it properly. And that is one reason you want to go to gallium nitride and silicon carbide, right? So now if you look at um, silicon, they cannot go more than a few hundred volt unless you use something called super junction. But there's a limit. But for gallium nitride, they can easily go to 600, 1200 volts. And then for silicon carbide, even higher, we're talking about 3,000 volts. And some extreme operation, people, I saw paper, they play with diamond. I told you diamond has about 6 EV of band gap to 10 kilovolt. Uh, yeah, 10 kilovolt, right? Okay, you can imagine if I can really utilize this on this transcontinental or uh, interstate power delivery, right? Those voltage are very high, right, in order to save energy. And if I can really use electronic switch to turn it on and off, it will be really a smart grid. And if there's a storm, let's say, in Nevada, break down the network, I can do it, switch it, and then deliver the power from elsewhere. Unlike a few years ago, right, the whole Northwest, or I forgot, right, the many tens of states just collapsed because of the storm. And I think that is because, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that was because all these are just connected not in a smart grid uh, level, right? Once one of them is done, then the rest will get a uh, corrupted. Their grid is separate. They're the separate. From the Western and Eastern. Okay. Besides the local. I see. Wouldn't the better use of those transistors be for DC transmission lines? Yeah, also. Since 10 kilovolts getting into the range, you, you can now actually send the voltage. Okay. Along. So, so you know better than me. So he's talking about uh, when we can go to that high voltage, maybe DC is more uh, efficient, right? DC is definitely more efficient. Fifty kilovolts. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't run two hundred forty volts through high voltage transmission lines. Right. Yeah. So, so there are many. Mm -hmm. There are many things to discuss, so like what he said, right? And that's why Tesla, the, the guy, not the company, right? They start with, he actually proposed to have DC power, right? If I'm right, I don't know if you yeah. know. Yeah, but then because of all this efficiency issue, turn out AC is the best, right? So there are many things, yeah. So the electronics, you make it smart, you will find that it can revolutionize many things that we have been used for hundreds of years. Okay, so pay attention to this. I spend a lot of time. 